how did you go about booking the tour? And also, was it a solo tour? It was not a solo tour. It was, my, it was going to be my first like full tour with a band. I was I had just fundraised enough for a van. I was going to get like the first fat chunk of a van that I was going to get. Um, and yeah, it was my first tour tour with that. But I had played a solo, a small solo tour down in Texas. Okay. Um, and like went through St. Louis and played in Texas. And then I picked up my sister in Houston and then we played a couple of shows. Oh, we cool. played a show in Houston cause she's a musician as well. And she, uh, we're trying to work on her, her debut EP it takes time. She's writing a novel instead. That's taking a lot of her, a lot of her focus, <laughs> but we were, you know, we went there and went down and it was basically just, I had a, I had a giant Google Sheets database that yeah. of just of things that I just entered and I just emailed and called everybody and just had a fucking had a copy and paste and would just cold email just everyone with my just with what I thought they needed to hear to make it as simple and easy as possible and uh-huh. to try and and you know I sent them you send them the EPK you send them a couple of videos you sent of good videos of performance that I have and and yeah and and then a lot of, and at the same time, you have to be reaching out to bands and stuff too. Right. So like I, some, some venues wouldn't care and they'd be like, yeah, like let us know when you find the other bands and the other, some venues would be like, no, we need a guaranteed draw. Mm-hmm. And that's part of why the band, getting the other bands too is like, it's, I, you, it's the first time in a city, everyone's like, it's your first time. Like, I can't trust that you're going to just draw people. Like, right. And, the, and, and I, which is understandable, mm-hmm. you know, and but it depends on the venue. Some venues, you know, will are uh, will take anybody, and uh, and those are those are harder to find. And and you know, you want there's I don't know. It was my first time doing that, so it was a lot of emailing. I was being to I was going to be the tour manager. I was going to be the production manager. I was going to be because you the didn't band have anything manager. else to do apparently. <laughs> yeah, I I have I didn't have enough things I needed to be doing or you know at the time for releasing an album and and planning the tour and stuff, but. So in a way, I mean, I say that because I mean, in a way, it was a kind of a huge relief in a, in a bad. Right. Like, I was so disappointed, but it was actually a relief because I was like, I was thinking about all that, being the tour manager, the the band mm-hmm. manager, the production manager, the the marketing person, the the and the performer, and the you know, and the merch person, and everything, and the driver, and I have to keep track of all the costs. Mm-hmm. I have to, you know, I don't so make sure that my band isn't starving or freezing or whatever at that point even you describing that like why do you even want to do that like (laughs) (laughs) that's a great question i i mean i i want to do it because i well i had a new album and i had bought 300 vinyls that i needed to sell (laughs) okay (laughs) and i mean that's part the that's part of it I, i wanted to get my feet wet with touring i had a lot of a lot of fans being like when are the tours when are the tours when are the tours and i Part of coming back from Ireland was, and making that transition was going into live performance. After that, I had never performed live music really. Um, maybe maybe once or twice in college, I played um, as MC Culla before right. before before 2015, and it was basically just me uh, singing karaoke over my beats. You know the stuff that I made, and mm-hmm. which was it was cool. It was fun at the time. Like I played at the rave for RJD2 which was awesome. Oh nice. And I got I got pumped up I got bumped up to to the main stage. I was just I was playing in the in the side and I was like, "Oh damn, I'm playing the side like whatever." And <laughs> but then they came to me like, "Hey, the opener to the opener is gone. So, he's not they're not showing up. So, you're now that." I was like, "Whoa." So they're like, "Yeah, I go on the main stage and talk to the sound guy." And I was like, "My first show ever. I didn't know it was go- like and it's at the huge stage of the rave that I'd seen the White Stripes play, it, you know." Right. Like, and I was just like, "Wow." This, this is amazing. I was able, yeah. But uh, so it, I, I started doing performance after that, essentially. Like after I came back, and um, touring has always been something on my mind, and I just know it's a vital part of m- making connections with mm-hmm. people, especially through music. Like I've had some, I've made lifetime fans from performances. Like it, it, it changes people's perspective. It changes people, even friends and family, when they come and they see a performance. They like, well, it, it changed it. I maybe it's, I don't know what it is, but I, sometimes I sense like a switch or something. They like, they'll, they understand something more or they have, I mean, you've been to live performance, you're a right. musician, like, you know, you understand this, but, but, uh, the, it's, it's a special, it's a special thing to, to 
be in a room with live music and everything. It is. And it makes makes genuine connections and and it like of the people all the people that listen to our music them to have that experience too is that's the, that was the goal is to is to allow that like for me to meet people that like want me to succeed like that's what i want to meet yeah. i want to meet those people